Welcome back to my channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. Hey guys, I'm back for another video. In this video, I am making a junk charm necklace. Now, I've already started with some of the charms that I'm using. These are actually buttons, believe it or not. Um, I got these, I believe, from Michael's Arts and Crafts. So what I'm going to do is continue along of what I was doing before I got on camera. And I'm just going to go ahead and complete it. It will take approximately 15 to uh, 25 minutes to do a charm necklace. Uh, it all depends on if you have all of your product out ready. Um, also, if you have the style in mind that you want to um, go with. And so since I have everything out here right now, it's not going to take me very long. And I've already started it. But I wanted to get it started so that it wouldn't take so long on camera. Um, I really want you to see the um, finished outcome, and I kind of want to do a shorter video. So I started before I got on air. Now again, I'm up late at night because as I've stated in a previous video before, is that, um, you know, from 10 to 2 in the morning is the most quiet time for me. So I try to make jewelry around that time, do videos around that time because... You know, it's just quieter. And there's no dogs barking. There's no neighbors slamming things. Although right now, my neighbor is playing music. Loud bass vibrating my wall. So if you guys hear it in the video, I'm sorry that you have to hear that. Okay, so, I'm, so what I've done is... On some of these jump rings, they're a little bit too small, so they don't have the reach that I need. So I'm just adding um, another one on here. So you can add two or three, whatever your preferences are, okay? Um, let me know, what are your favorite times of the day or evening or morning to make jewelry? I would be... Um, interested in knowing because we all have our, our quiet time and do you find that you make more jewelry when it's quiet or when it's loud or, or what I'd be curious to know all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to constantly be moving this around because I'm kind of trying to get the perfect angle that I like uh, the charm necklace at Okay, so I'm going to add, be adding more on here. Um, and you really don't have to have it a certain way, but I, I, I like it a certain way. So this is going to be a junk necklace, a junk charm necklace. And what a, ju a junk charm necklace is, is basically taking like antique things or junk items that you would maybe not use on something else and place it on to um a beautiful necklace like this okay i think that's coming out to be really really pretty um i'm gonna make this full because i like a full charm necklace they uh have some out there like i know that tiffany um and company they make the most beautiful um charm necklaces but theirs are with these hearts and they have, I believe some of them are 9.25 sterling that they work with. They have some, they have the most beautiful jewelry. Um, I, I love it. I had a cousin that works for them. And so he was telling me that um, they never have a sale. Okay. They never have a sale. All right. So I'm going to be adding some more. And again, sometimes um, you have to widen the jump ring a little bit wider. I don't know why you have to do that sometimes, but sometimes you have to. Okay. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put the second one on here. 
Alrighty. And again, I'm looking to fill up this whole thing. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going until this whole thing is filled with these beautiful bronze beads. Or uh, in this case, these are actually uh, buttons. And yeah, guys, that does happen. <clears throat> just take it and put it right back on there. You know, that's the one thing about jewelry making. Sometimes, um, you know, if you're working with wire or if you're working with um, chains, it does the most weirdest things. And then you wind up having to take like five or ten minutes to fix it. But hey, that's a uh, part of being a jewelry maker. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Now, I want to continue to fill this up. And matter of fact, I want to change this around a little bit because I particularly uh, all right, there we go. Back to where the way I had it. Okay. Sometimes you just flip it over. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna take uh some more of these and I'm gonna keep layering it until it gets you know, full enough where I want it. Um, I kind of like want this to be really, really full. I just like the full look again. Um, but again, um, it's your preference. I've seen people make the charm um, necklaces with this type of material and they, they, you know, they didn't fill it out. And again, it's about preference and you don't have to stick to just, uh, these particular, um, buttons or just any particular beads, but because I like this look, I'm going to go ahead and use all of these up because I have quite a few of them. And, um, uh, yeah, I want to make something nice, something pretty. And I think after this is over with, this is going to actually be really, really pretty. Okay, now um, I'm going to start filling in like the little spaces here and here and also down below. So I have like a bigger um, button that I want to add there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to subscribe to my channel. I, I uh, hope and pray that there's something on this channel that will inspire you and, you know, get those creative juices flowing. I know sometimes we we just need to get inspiration from other artists, you know, and put your own spin on it. Because it's really all about your spin. We all have um, different niches, you know. We all do things differently. But I love to watch other channels and see what they're making, you know. And half the time, I don't even... Uh, make anything that they're making but i just like to see what colors they're combining um i think it's so fascinating to watch all the different color combinations that people come up with because sometimes you can have a bead and you're like i have no idea what to do with this color like it could be some you know green color it could be a polka dot color and you're like i am clueless but then when you watch somebody else's channel and you see how well they combine uh those colors together you're like oh i would have never thought of that and so that's why i love to um 
watch my fellow uh, jewelry makers make some of the most beautiful designs. And I mean, you guys make some fabulous designs. All right. So we're going to hang that around a little bit. All right, I'm going to, again, be looking to add in this area. Now, this particular one here, right here, I don't like the way that it's sitting. So I'm going to take that off of there and I'm going to uh, set it again. Okay. And sometimes you'll have to do that, guys. You'll have to take something apart because it just doesn't lay right. I mean, you know. You want, you know, when you're doing a video, it would be nice if it, you know, came out perfect on camera. But you know what? Sometimes that just don't happen. I'm just, this is the real side of making, um, making jewelry on live, you know? So if you're thinking it's going to be perfect, it is not. Let me know um, if there's something um, you might be interested in seeing on here because I make a lot of things. I make a lot of different things. And I also talk about, you know, um, life as an entrepreneur, as a jewelry maker. You know, some of you uh, may not be doing this as a business. You might just be doing it as a hobby. But what for whatever um, purposes you watch the video I hope that you're getting something that you can really use I've been making jewelry for about 21 years um, I started in 2002 it was right after my father had passed um, and you know I was just you know sitting in the living room and you know thinking about um some of the people I knew, how crafty they were. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't have a crafty bone in my body. And I remember praying and thinking, you know what? I don't have any crafts. I, I don't know how people make these beautiful paintings. They make beautiful silk roses and different other things. And I'm thinking, I, you know, I, I, I sing and I do those type of things. And I'm really good, you know, at writing, but... I was like, I, I I don't think I have any craftiness of a, you know, involved. Uh, but I soon found out um, that I was very, very wrong. <laughs> and I've been doing jewelry for now 21 years, and I absolutely love it. Tell me some of the things that you love about making jewelry. What are some of the best things about making jewelry? I know for me, it is so relaxing, uh, very, very therapeutic. It helps me to um, to calm down. It helps me to think on other things besides, you know, life and things that happen in your life. Um, I love the fact that I can create something beautiful. And I also love the fact that people wear my jewelry. I think that's one of the most uh, flattering things to make a piece of jewelry and somebody loves it enough to wear it. I think that is so flattering. All right, we are 13 minutes in. I'm going to be adding more here. Because like I said, I'm looking for that full look. And so I'm just going to keep on going. And uh, don't mind me, guys, if I'm just chatting away. I kind of tend to chat when I'm um, working on something. And um, well, this is a tutorial, right? So I just expect it to be quiet. Okay, so um, as you can see, it's filling up. I still have little gaps in between here that I would like to close off. So I'm gonna get some more of these. Now you don't just have to stick to buttons. You can add anything else on there. You might uh, wanna add a bead or two on there. If you have something um, that matches the color in what you're working with, feel free. 
embellish it. You know, you don't have to uh, just stay with one um, particular uh, set of, of beads or buttons. You don't have to do that. You can actually embellish it the way that you uh, like it. And if you're wearing it for yourself, hey, you know, you know, that's the one thing about me. I find it hard to just set aside some time to make jewelry for myself, because like I said, this is a business for me. And so I'm constantly making jewelry to sell. And um, every so often I'll sit down and make something for myself. It's sort of like a hairdresser, you know, the hairdresser, everybody else's hair is done, but their hair is not done, which I think is funny. Even a nail, even a nail titian, you know, their nails aren't ever done. I, I, I rarely see, I wonder if that's just the, um, the trade. I don't know. I rarely see people that do hair with their hair done. And I rarely see people, you know, uh, doing nails with their nails done. It's really weird. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that. Is that true? Or are you one of those jury artists that no matter what, you're going to have something to wear? You know, you're going to make it. I remember I had this um, birthday party I was going to, one of my good friends. And I had like 20 minutes to spare to make me something. And I made this little cute little necklace in, in about 20 minutes. Um, and it absolutely set ablaze the outfit that I was wearing. I thought it was really cute. All right, so where, where am I gonna add this? I think I'm gonna add this right here because that's gonna give it the full look that I'm looking for. All right. Now, as you guys can see, um, it's looking pretty full here. But again, I still want to add some more in between here because, again, I wanted, I just wanted to have that heavy look, although it's not really heavy. Those are very lightweight that I'm adding to this chain. Um, it's very, very lightweight. I hope that you guys are finding something inspiring on this video. Um, if you have any questions as far as entrepreneurship, you know, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, a jewelry maker, it's not always easy. You know, we we have so much um, or so many hats, I should say, that we have to wear being an entrepreneur. I know for me, I do everything in my business right now because I am still a small business owner for right now. And so I do everything. I do the photography. I do the the modeling. I do the finances, the uh, marketing, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, and sometimes, you know, you get wore out doing it all but you know it won't always be that way you know it takes time to build a business and I used to think you know I should have done this by now and I should have did this by now but you know that's not always how life goes you know, and kudos to those that um, are able to build their business up in five years, five or 10 years. But sometimes, you know, when you're working and, you know, you have other obligations, it takes a little bit more time to build your business. So if you find that you're one of those people that your business is growing slow, don't be discouraged. You know, sometimes... It's better that it grows slowly than too much and too fast where you can't handle it. You can't handle the pace. Um, you know, you never want to, um, you know, go faster than what you are ready to 
handle. And never compare yourself to other people. That's the other thing. Don't compare yourself. Okay, guys, I think that um, I pretty much kind of sealed all the little areas that I wanted to seal, except up here. So I'm going to add a couple more up here, and then I am going to end the video. But I wanted you to see what you can absolutely make uh, with your leftover um, beads. I know I talked about um, the bead soup. Now, listen, guys, I am having a competition. You know, if you guys are interested in being a part of the bead soup uh, competition, you know, you can email me at T-O-L-E-E-D-E-Z-I-G-N-S at gmail.com or you can leave something in the comments. I also am hosting a group um, on Facebook. It is called Totally Designs by Kesa. If you are interested in being a part of that group. Uh, go over there and join that group. And it is for those that um, are interested in taking their, you know, leftover beads and making something beautiful. A bead soup is just basically taking old things, old beads, uh, extra leftover beads, and making the most gorgeous um, piece of jewelry that you can make. Um, and I'm having a challenge. Um, the person that makes the best bead soup necklace or bracelet, you're going to win a prize. So again, if you are interested in becoming, um, a part of that competition, you can email me or you can go over to Facebook and join the Facebook group. I will, uh, leave the information in the chat so that those of you that might be interested in that challenge um go ahead you know iron sharpens iron and so um i'm really about sharpening our tools and using what we have i know as jewelry makers we love to buy beads i know me i love to buy new beads because i'm thinking you know what oh this style is out but it isn't. Sometimes our creativity is just not where it needs to be. And we think that if we buy, you know, new beads, we'll get more inspiration, you know. And that's not far-fetched all the time, you know. Sometimes that's right on the money. Anyway, um, I am basically done with this. I may add a little bit more when I get off camera. We'll see. Um, I don't want to forego and prolong this video. But as you can see, isn't that gorgeous? I just took buttons and made this a junk necklace. Okay, guys, until the next video, I wish you nothing but happy beating. Talk to you soon.